Easter Sunday is approaching, and how is COVID doing before Easter? There's 90 new deaths in the state of Texas, no new cases. Nine new cases in Oasis County. And we're still at over 600,000 with over 20,000 new te positive tests and 3.8% positive. ICU people over 1,500 and 10,000 people are in ICU ever since two days ago. And since the 15th, 72.7% have, had, have uh, been, had at least one dose for 21 million. And fully vaccinated people had at least 17.7 .7 million, which is 61.1% of the population. 568 million doses have been given, 292 people have been fully vaccinated, and 66.4% of the population has been fully vaccinated. Getting close to that population, when it, and with everything that's going on, it's like, okay, what, what else can we do to make sure that everyone, uh, gets back to normal here. I mean, next fifth, next 14 days, we're going to be looking, the, uh, the, uh, TSA is going to keep mandating it's mass made for travel until the 15th of April. So that could mean we could see, we could be back to normal, especially for me. But Pfizer is requesting booster approval for kids ages 5 to 11. And they're still seeking FDA approval. And we'll let you know what happens. But until that time comes, we'll never know. And uh, schools are probably going to be doing the same thing. If Philadelphia is going to be mandating its mask, that would mean schools have to go back to square one like, we, like it did in March. So that could be some good news for people who basically want to get a vaccine. Like if you're Nobody is taking people seriously. I mean, I mean, let's let's focus more on quarantine. It's like no one's taking quarantine very seriously. So, when I say quarantine, you stay at home. That doesn't mean you go out with friends. If you're quarantined, you can't break quarantine. If you break quarantine, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. In case of Lisa Guerrero, she was on quarantine, and now she has the virus again. Now she has to be quarantined for another five days, which is ten days. So if you're quarantined, you need to stay home. If you want to, if you want lunch, you can make lunch at home. Like you got stocked up at the store before you had the virus, or you can get stuff delivered here. Use favor, use DoorDash, use Grubhub, whatever. And again, if you and again, if you test positive, stay quarantined five days. After the fifth day, go get yourself tested again. If you're negative, then you're clear. You have, and you also have to show your boss the paperwork. That's how it is with me. Well. I'm, again, I'm not going to explain. People will be like, what happened? And I, I don't want to go into full detail. This is family matter. This is some family crap here. And if I discuss family member on the show, then it's going to be cut. But, I, but what else needs to happen here is that I'm lost for words here. I mean, I shaved. I shaved. I shaved. I just shaved minutes ago, and I really got nothing else to talk about, about Easter. So, what I can say is that the wearing of a mask. I mean, many people think that they don't like to wear masks. I mean, just Friday when I was on the bus, I saw two people who did not wear a mask. I really wanted to talk to the bus driver and say, 
Oh, excuse me, sir. There's two people that are not wearing face masks. I didn't want to get involved, so I decided to keep my mouth shut because I didn't want to get involved in a fist fight or go on an argument saying, well, I have a medical condition. Okay. But until that time, we need to make sure we're wearing our masks, we're staying socially distant, we're washing our hands, disinfecting our area, we're following the TSA rules until May 3rd, we're also making sure that we're quarantined, testing, well, if you, when you come in contact, you need to make sure you get tested. And if you lost your sense of smell, it could be because of COVID. If you don't get it back within a month, then obviously you got COVID. If your child's medical condition, you're letting them beforehand. If you're in a two, no masks. If your child is eligible for the vaccine, everyone's eligible to get the vaccine. But I understand, we gotta be safe here. But Shanghai. is uh, protesting under strict lockdown and we don't have time for that but if we had time we would show it to you but but not right now next has there been any latest incidents has there been the latest case in that in Jonathan in Jonathan Martinez Garcia after last week he said he attempted he intentionally murdered his teacher we'll give you the very latest and then later on and later Easter plans for 2022 don't go away. Up front tonight, if you've been tuning into this broadcast this week, we you, we've been telling you about the latest case in CCSD, to where a teach where, where a student attacked a, attacked an unidentified teacher, all because of his grades. We told you about what would happen. What happened? We, the name was given out. Jonathan Taylor Martinez now is charged with attempted murder, sexual assault, first degree sexual assault. assault. Burglary and battery. Burglary, battery, robbery. We also told you about those little handheld things that, uh, the little alarm, so you press a button, it'll, it'll send out a, it'll send out a police car, but we haven't showed it to you, so, I told you about that on Tuesday or Wednesday, so I'm going to tell you about it right now. Excuse me. to protecting students and educators on campus, it could be as close as the press of a button. School Superintendent Jesus Jara says he is working to get educators outfitted with personal alert devices that could save lives. Anchor Abel Garcia joins us live in studio with a breakdown of how these devices work and how it would keep teachers safe. Abel? Yeah, they know if these panic buttons do make their way into their classrooms, they would look something very similar to this. And each and every teacher would just simply wear it around their neck. And if there were to be an emergency, teachers would simply hit the panic button and authorities would be contacted immediately. But teachers tell me this will not solve our problems. School Superintendent Jesus Jara is calling for immediate action after the sexual assault and attempted murder of an El Dorado High teacher. Adults, our teachers and staff, will be able to contact the administrative staff and first responders from anywhere in their location. Dara outlined plans to bring in a new alert system yes. to protect teachers and students, but one teacher disagrees. I don't think uh, a, you know an alert button will be a solution to this, or a panic button will be a solution for our educators. The, the overall issues that we're having in the school district, it's not just about a panic button. Vicki Crydell has been a teacher for eight years. She had no idea what this personal panic button was until I sat down with her and showed her. She says the school district should focus on students' behavioral issues and provide mental health support. Would that have helped the teacher at El, El Dorado? Possibly. I mean, her situation was unique. These personal safety devices well, are already in use in schools across the country. The Lovejoy Independent School District in Texas has been using them since 2018. Educators there call the device ago. proactive and critical for their students and staff safety. If we can help our teachers and our students have more confidence and focus on learning and focus on teaching, because they know if they need someone, they can push the button and they will come and get them, and that's a win-win for all. With this particular system, a teacher presses a button, it connects to the closest receiver, which will be located in each classroom. First responders will know who pressed it and where it is coming from. I don't know that that's realistic, 
Clark County School District Trustee Danielle Ford says Tuesday was the first time she heard of plans to bring it here. She says the biggest problem is staffing shortages and a lack of community involvement. I don't know that that's the solution to all the problems. Maybe it's one piece of the puzzle of 20 things that need to be implemented. Now in Tuesday's meeting, Dara says the first school to get these devices will be at El Dorado High School where the sexual assault and attempted murder of a teacher took place. Then at the rest of the high, middle, and elementary schools. He says he would like to get this done as soon as possible. I'm Abel Garcia reporting live in studio. And I think it's a good idea. But there is a video. I think there is a video. I don't think there's any video about this, so I'm, I'm not going to play it for you, but we do know that it's a good idea. Has it been, but we do know what happened. But, but just, uh, <clears throat> just a few weeks ago, there has been another shooting in Pennsylvania, and another student saw it. In every Pennsylvania, one student was injured with multiple shots were fired inside a high school in northwestern Pennsylvania Tuesday morning, and another student was, was being sought as a suspect, authorities said. The deputy chief of police said a shooting was reported after 9.20 a.m. at Erie High. The shooting occurred in the hallway of and other students were in the vicinity, although school fish, a school fish said it didn't take place during the change of classes. The injured student was taken to the hospital, said to be in stable condition, no other injuries were reported. No one said due to the age of involved, you couldn't release any more information. The district attorney indicated that the suspect faced only juvenile charges with a person aged younger than 15. No one said the 9mm weapon had been used, had to be removed, and the exact number of shots of fire had not been confirmed. But has there been an increase of school violence ever since? Well, according to edweek.org, from April 5th last week, people killed and injured one. March 31st, Hagerwood Middle School injured, injured. One person was injured, one person was killed. One person was killed, and another student was killed. And if we look at the map here, in Yakima, Washington, May 15th, one person was injured, one person was killed. Uh, March 9th, in San Antonio, one person was injured. Florida, three people were injured. The 19th, one person was injured. In the Tech Boston Academy in Massachusetts, Two, in, two people were injured. And since then, 22 in, school students were injured, were deaths, 38 people killed and injured, six people killed, five, five students have been killed, and one school employee or the adults have been killed. But the bottom line here is that, the bottom line here is, it's very inappropriate. We don't need a lot of these school violences. I mean, looking at here, by the country, I mean, Alaska, United States and Alaska, 228. Mexico, zero shootings. 
South of Brazil, two school shootings. None. I mean, this whole map here, I mean, in Russia, one school shooting. China. Spain. South Africa has had six school shootings. I mean, it's all over the country here. It needs to stop. If it doesn't stop, then chances are kids are going to be scared to go to school because of bullying and people getting shot at. More Give Me a Break when we come back. If you don't have any plans for Easter or looking for great activities for the kids... ThePioneerWoman.com, the greatest chef ever who makes the best mac and cheese, best potato casserole. I gotta get credit to this woman. From the Pioneer Woman, there are 25 best Easter activities to try with your kids this year. You can have an Easter egg come, like a traditional one, like hide all the Easter eggs. You can hide all the Easter eggs and have your kids go find them. Or even especially, try with adults. If your dad drinks beer, hide the beer around the house. <laughs> yeah, you can hide the beer around the house and then he'll start looking for it going, Where's my beer? Where's my beer? I want my beer! <laughs> and all of a sudden, next you can dye Easter eggs. Just make sure you boil your eggs first. If you have like food coloring and all, it's perfect. You can display them, hide them, or even eat them. I'm not even much to eat afterwards. You can also visit the Easter Bunny. You can enjoy Easter brunch, pancakes, eggs, ham, potatoes, hot crust buns. An Easter brunch is a good way to break up the day. Make Easter baskets. Hot crust buns is the great one. Decorate Easter with lilies, plant flowers, go to church on a Sunday, that'd be great. Bake a gorgeous glazed ham. Play games outside. Make Easter crafts together. Read them a story. Books are expensive, but hey, you got something to work for for the day. Money shaped treats like cupcakes. You can have a movie marathon like Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit 2. Movies about Easter. A few Easter movies that hang out on the couch to unwind. Volunteer your time. Volunteer at a food pantry or, or participate in local efforts to plant trees or flowers. Send out Easter cards for your friends and family. You can decorate outside too. Make birdhouses. Get active. Like I am. Have a picnic. Munch on chocolate bunnies. Make special Easter drinks, whether it's minimums for the adults or fruity punch for the kids, like I have here a Hawaiian punch. A tasty specialty drink will limit up any Easter celebration. Paint your Easter eggs, if you've got food coloring, and dress up your pet. You got the, you got the bunny ears, looks great. What about the traditions with your shares your family? Have a host a egg spoon race. Decorate the garden. You can hunt around a bonfire. Get into costume if you have the uh, bunny ears. Pin an Easter corsage. Make music as a family. Send out Easter cards. Watch a classic Easter movie. Host an Easter egg hunt. Dying Easter eggs. Hot cross buns. Fill Easter basket. Eat chocolate bunnies. Sun Sunrise Mass, like we talked about. You can bake a ham. Sandwich with the cross. Egg tapping. Give up something for Lent. If you observe Lent, you're probably familiar with the animal tradition. People often give something up for Lent. Caffeine, sugar, cursing. Thankfully, come Easter Sunday, you can indulge one again. Once again, you can eat fish and chips on Easter Sunday. Well, Lent is over, but you get the idea. You eat Easter Bournette, Easter Brunch. Like we used to treat going on an Easter parade. There hasn't been one in, in uh, Texas.
but But is there any other Easter plans? Let's check out Shutterfly for more details. I mean, that wasn't Easter last year because of COVID. You had to be very careful. Action pack Easter basket, paper mache basket. That's for like crafts and all. But how about the Easter brunch? for your Sunday morning this year. You have sticky buns, air fryer asparagus, pickled eggs, ugh. Lemon poppy seed cake, slow cooker ham, strawberry muffins, lemon ricotta pancakes, spinach quiche, Easter bread, cinnamon roll monkey bread. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. Orange Crush Cocktail for adults only. Horseradish Devil Eggs. Baked Salmon. Green Eggs and Ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Carrot Tart. Blueberry Pancakes. Favorite. Dill Dip. Quiche. Carrot Salad. Sausage Breakfast Casserole. Let me pop your seeds. Baked feta egg casserole, sour cream pancakes, everything cucumber smoked salmon bites, Bloody Mary, cinnamon roll breakfast casserole. A lot of casseroles, it's that potluck thing. You also got strawberries and cream scones. An asparagus tart, air fryer taters, giant judge baby pancake, holiday breakfast casserole, spinach feta buns, pecan pie french toast. Roasted carrot spring pesto, ham and cheese potato with caramelized onion, eggs, Benedict Satara, glazed Easter ham, hot cross buns, a cowboy quiche, lemon poppy seed waffles, a baked French toast, skillet biscuits, honey glazed carrots and parsnips, kind of like the albino carrot, if you will, a pea salad, monkey bread, a fruit salad, honey glazed ham and checkerboard rolls. Ravioli, primavera, cinnamon rolls, scalloped potatoes and ham, a chicken salad, potato salad with mustard vinaigrette, sunrise food salad, grilled breakfast pizza, coffee cake, donut hole kebabs, spring puff pastry tart, lemon pancakes, maple nut scones, eggs and hash brown nests, whipped devil eggs with dill, rosemary hasselback potatoes, honey mustard glazed ham, baking red asparagus, lemon pound cake, Spring salad radishes, root beer glazed ham, roast asparagus with Cajun hollandaise, in case you want to make hollandaise sauce, herbed, herbed devil eggs, carrot cake at the store, peaty orange vanilla scones, instant pot poached eggs, savory herb butter Dutch baby, strawberry buns, a sheet pan mustard salmon, frozen Mimosas, can't pronounce that right. And the East Lemon Easter cookies. Just basically a sugar cookie. That's all the Easter ideas I can give you. But if you're going out for Easter, be careful because chocolate can melt. What do you like you mean chocolate can melt? Melt. What temperature does chocolate melt? Dark chocolate between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. White milk and white chocolate should melt at around 105 to 115. So if you have chocolate in your Easter eggs, be very, very careful. And if you're going out to Easter egg hunt, it's the same thing. You have to be very careful here.
but but uh moving off to Easter now you ever see a piece of meat being thrown to space take a listen you might you might see hey it's fine That's one small step for me. One giant leap for meat kind. A restaurant owner and kebab enthusiast in Turkey found an unusual way to celebrate the 61st anniversary of the first human spaceflight by attempting to send a kebab into space. No, really. The restaurateur and his crew put a kebab on a pipe. They then put the meat on a styrofoam tray attached to a box. The box was designed to endure the extreme conditions of the Earth's outer atmosphere. Inside was a GoPro and a tracking device to keep up with the flying food. The items were then lifted using a large helium balloon. After about three hours of flying, reaching an altitude of 22 to 25 miles, the balloon burst and the kebab fell with it. It was found intact about 75 miles from where it started. Then brought back to the restaurant for a celebration. It was a cooked. The owner was happy with the outcome and said he plans on attempting the stunt again. So if you're in the region and you see meat flying around, pay it no mind. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andrea Swindle. That was cool. When we come back, a reality show has toddlers running errands alone. Outrageous. And then our countdown. Here's a question for your parents. Would you let your kids go grocery shopping alone under the age of eight, under the age of eight under the age of eighteen? There's a new reality TV show. Take a look. Would you let your kids do this? Bye bye. In this popular new Netflix show, you can see toddlers running errands all by themselves, not a parent in sight. It's called Old Enough, but many are saying it should be called old Not enough? Old Enough. Introducing the concept to an American audience break. and sparking plenty of debate. I would not do this. The show is hugely popular in Japan, and now Americans can see it on the streaming service. This two-year-old goes on a 23-minute walk to buy food and flowers. He sticks out a yellow flag to alert motorists he wants to cross a busy highway. Pretty crazy. <laughs> This four-year-old girl is scared to leave home alone, but armed with a purse, a shopping bag, and a brave face, she heads solo to the fish market. And this three-year-old boy's dad just asked him to fetch his jacket from home, which is a bus ride away. He gets on and off the bus alone. After picking up the jacket, the adorable Todd wears it on his bus journey back to dad. While it's shocking many American parents, there are cultural factors to consider. There definitely is that wow factor. Here in the U.S., we definitely do not give our children that kind of independence. And you could really see through the show that this is their way of life. Of course, these kids aren't really totally alone. There's a camera crew and a producer recording everything. You can see a cameraman right there. And there's no denying seeing little ones do adult things is just plain adorable. Watching the show brings so much happiness to so many people's faces. In five years, I've never seen it. That brings us to our cap now. All month long, we're celebrating our five-year anniversary. So here's the latest in our top 15 of the five-year countdown. This counts. This is what I've seen. This is That's number eight in the countdown. That's number eight. A reality show about kids walking alone. Then at number nine, an investigation into a Florida Bluff student that had his hair cut by a drill instructor. I'm still following the case and trying to find out who had done it. 
That's all for this edition of Give Me a Break Saturday. Tune in on Monday for another outrageous Give Me a Break. And the next number at our five-year countdown. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good night. Until next time, America. Happy Easter.